Hello everyone, welcome back to Combat Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Why was Mrs. Second Dose introduced in Universal Immunization Program? So, as the title suggests, it was not always two doses of measles which was given. Earlier, it was only a single dose, but later on, the second dose of measles was introduced in National Immunization Schedule. Now this is a very commonly asked question in the VIBA examination and also given as explain why question in the theory paper. So in today's video, we shall learn why the second dose of measles was introduced in Universal Immunization Program. In the year 1985, measles vaccine was first introduced in Universal Immunization Program in our country. And since the introduction, there had been a significant decrease in the number of measles cases. But in the year 2008, the government of India decided and also announced that they would introduce the second dose of measles vaccine in the national immunization schedule. And it was implemented in the year 2010 when the second dose of measles was introduced and following that there was also a significant reduction in the measles disease burden in India. By now, we already know that measles vaccine is given twice because there are two doses. The first dose is given at 9 to 12 months, preferably at 9 months. And the second dose is given in between 60 to 24 months, preferably at 18 months. So if we look at the national immunization schedule, we can see it is mentioned here. Measles dose 1, 9 completed months to 12 completed months, uh, preferably around 9 months and measles second dose in between 16 to 24 months, preferably around 18 months. In both cases, that means in uh, in both the doses, uh, the amount is 0.5 ml given as subcutaneous injection and the site of injection is right upper arm to maintain the uniformity. To understand the concept and to answer the question why the second dose of measles was introduced, we must understand these two terminologies vaccine effectiveness and vaccine coverage. Now let us discuss vaccine coverage first. Vaccine coverage, also known as immunization coverage, is basically the estimated proportion of people receiving a specific vaccine. Now let me simplify this sentence for you. In a given community, there will be only few people who are eligible for the vaccine. That means not all the people in, in the community are eligible for the vaccine. Who are the eligible people? Those people who need the vaccine and who can take the vaccine. So that means ineligible people are either they do not need the vaccine or they cannot take the vaccine. Why? Because maybe some of those people already developed the disease and because of that they already developed lifelong immunity. So that is why they do not need the vaccine anymore. Also, maybe some other people in the community has some situations maybe some kind of conditions which are contraindication for the vaccine and that is why they cannot take the vaccine so these people who do not need the vaccine or those who cannot take the vaccine are considered as ineligible people rest of the people in the community who can take the vaccine and who should take the vaccine are the eligible people right next thing we have to understand that in a given community out of all eligible people, not all of them will take the vaccine for one or more reasons. It is ideal and expected and desirable that all of the eligible people should take the vaccine. But there will be some factors for which not all of them will take the vaccine and some of the people will actually reject. That means they will not agree to take the vaccine. Right. So this is known as vaccine coverage. That means out of all the eligible people, how many of them are actually taking the vaccine? Now, it can depend on 
many motivating factors and also barriers so what can be the motivating factors for example the person's knowledge or awareness about the disease that means how serious the disease is what can be the complication of the disease or maybe the signs and symptoms etc his knowledge about the vaccine can also be a motivating factor suppose if he knows that there are vaccines available which can prevent the disease maybe that will motivate him other factors like uh, motivation from the uh, health workers promotion of vaccination by the social media mass media etc all these things can be uh, acting as motivating factor in favor of vaccination <clears throat> on the other hand there can be some barriers like if a person is not aware about how serious a disease is or maybe he does not know there is vaccine available for the disease or maybe he is scared of the side effects or adverse event following vaccination so all these things can act as barriers now if we uh, come across a statement like this vaccine coverage of 90 percent so what does it mean it means out of 100 eligible people in a given population 90 people will get vaccinated while the remaining 10 people will not so this is vaccine coverage next is vaccine effectiveness which is basically the measurement of how well a vaccine works in real world or real life situation we have to understand that vaccines do not provide full or 100 percent protection to everyone who received the vaccine and because of that breakthrough infections can occur say a certain number of people receives a vaccine even after that some of them may develop the disease there can be certain factors for which a vaccine may fail or may work suboptimally we have come across a lot of cases where even after taking two doses of covid shield or co vaccine a person developed covid infection right so that is why vaccine effectiveness is not always 100 percent now vaccine effectiveness of 90 percent this is just a random number i have put here so vaccine effectiveness of 90 percent means in a vaccinated population 90% fewer people as compared to an unvaccinated population will contract the disease when they come in contact with the pathogen. Now, again, let me explain this sentence or statement. Suppose we are comparing two different population. In one population, all of them are vaccinated. In the second population, none of them are vaccinated. In the unvaccinated population, many people can develop the disease after coming in contact with the pathogen but also in the vaccinated population there will be few cases of the disease because as i said vaccine effectiveness is not 100 percent it does not provide full protection to everyone now this number of people who will be having the disease in the vaccinated population is 90 percent fewer as compared to the number of cases in the unvaccinated population so that is why this is very important that people take the vaccine even though there will be few cases of the disease in the vaccinated people but the number is much lower if you compare it with another population where the people did not take the vaccine so this is all about vaccine effectiveness now let us discuss few facts about measles vaccine when the vaccine is given at field level the effectiveness depends on the age at which it is given if it is given at nine months that means at the time of first dose the effectiveness is 85 percent if it is given beyond 12 months the effectiveness is more than 95 percent so the question that comes in our mind naturally is why don't we delay the first dose beyond 12 months because in a country like india measles is very common right uh, there are a lot of measles cases also measles related deaths there are a lot of complications and this disease is very much infectious that means it is spread very easily from a infected child to uh, susceptible children who are not vaccinated so that is why we cannot wait until the child turns one year uh, to give it the first dose also it is not recommended before six months of age because maternal antibody protects the child against infection so the most suitable time for first dose is 
at nine months. Another point that we should consider is vaccine coverage when given at nine months is 70 percent. All right. So we have few digits here, and we can use this digit to understand the problem here. So suppose in a village we have hundred children. So we are starting with hundred children. We know that the vaccine coverage is 70 percent when given at nine months. This is the time when we give the first dose. So the vaccine coverage of first dose of measles is 70 percent. That means 70 percent of this hundred children, that is 70 children, will receive the vaccine, whereas the remaining 13 children will not receive the vaccine. So these 30 children are already susceptible to disease. Next point that we are considering is the vaccine effectiveness at 9 months is 85%. That means out of all those children who receive the vaccine, 85% of them will be protected. So 70 children receive the vaccine, 85% of 70 is approximately 60. So these 60 children will be effectively protected against measles after first dose. Whereas these 10 children who received the vaccine, since the effectiveness is not 100%, so these 10 children will not be effectively protected. They are ineffectively protected. Right? So we can see that after first dose of measles vaccine in 100 children, because we started with 100 children, number of protected children is 60. Here we have 60 children protected effectively. Whereas number of unprotected children are 40 because we have 30 children who did not receive the vaccine and 10 children who received the vaccine but are not effectively protected since the effectiveness is not 100%. Right. So 30 unvaccinated children plus 10 ineffectively vaccinated children. So we can see that 40 out of 100 children are susceptible to develop the disease after first dose. So 40 out of 100 is 40 percent. So can you imagine in a given population of children, 40 percent of the children are susceptible to measles. That is actually huge number, right? So that is why it is very important that we introduce the second dose. Why is that? Now let us understand the strategies which were taken to reduce the proportion of susceptible children in the community and prevent measles outbreak. The first thing is to increase the first dose coverage. Right? We have learned that the vaccine coverage of first dose is 70 percent. Suppose by any means we could increase it to 100 percent. That means all the children will be vaccinated. So 100 children and 100 children will be vaccinated because 100 percent coverage. 85 percent of, of them will be effectively protected. So 85 percent of 100 would be 85. That means out of 100 children, 85 children would be effectively protected, whereas the remaining 15 children will be ineffectively protected. So 15 as compared to 40 is quite a huge decrease, right? Only by increasing the vaccine coverage. We could not change the vaccine effectiveness at nine months because it is not in our hand. What is in our hand is we can increase the vaccine coverage by motivating people. The second strategy that was taken was to introduce the second dose, the second opportunity for measles immunization, that is, second dose given at 16 to 24 months, effectiveness above 12 months, that is, nine, more than 85%. So, if we could introduce the second dose and the second dose has quite high coverage, so maybe these 30 children who did not receive the vaccine, most of them, if not all of them, would come to take the second dose, right? Also, these 10 children, even though they took the first dose, they were inevitably protected. So, if they take the second dose, and since the second dose has effectiveness of more than 95 percent, we can see this 30 plus 10, these 40 children will have high protection against measles, right? Of course, since 95 percent is not actually 100 percent, that means even after second dose, 
there will be few children who will remain susceptible again we cannot do anything about that but at least the number of susceptible children in a given community can be reduced drastically if we introduce the second dose so that is why you have to increase the first dose also introduce the second dose so considering all this concept the second dose was introduced since 2010 so i hope this answers your question why the second dose of measles was introduced in national immunization schedule make sure you are subscribed to our youtube channel like this video and share this video with your batchmates your juniors and with your friends we also have our facebook page that you can follow the link is given in the description take care and we shall see you in our next video